welcome to an American Indian College Fund event. We are the nation's largest and highest rated American Indian nonprofit organization, providing scholarships and support for thousands of Native students every year. We're glad that you joined us and hope that you'll discover other student resources and events at collegefund.org slash Native Pathways. From informative webinars to culturally relevant student materials, you can find all that you need to find success in high school and beyond. You can also sign up to receive monthly updates filled with scholarship and internship opportunities at collegefund.org slash stay connected. And follow us on our social media platforms at Native Pathways for daily posts with even more opportunities and resources. You can always reach our friendly support staff at scholarships at collegefund.org or at 800-426-8900. During this event, you will be muted, but please open up the chat window to the right to view comments, ask questions, and contribute to the discussion. Web links at the top of presentation slides will also allow you to interact and share your thoughts. Thanks for your attention. Now let's get started. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, the American Indian College Fund Full Circle Scholarship. This is our first day. The application is open for the next cycle for the 2020, excuse me, the 2021-2022 school year. So uh, you'll be able to apply for funding and support uh, starting today at collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. And we're just going to go through some really basic stuff today. We've got some great prizes. We have tablets to give away. We have some great uh, uh, Stephen Paul Judd t-shirts, uh, earbuds, a lot of great stuff, which uh, you'll be able to enter in uh, at the end of our event, which is great. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share uh, our presentation for the evening. And that is uh, through a platform called Menti. I don't know if any of you have used this before or seen it. There we go. It's one of the things that's great about this. It allows you to interact as a student. So if you look at that code at the top, 57053, you can go to menti.com and type that in either on a different uh, uh, web browser window or on your phone or tablet or something. And you'll actually be able to interact during our event, which is nice. Because we're going to ask some questions. We're going to go through Full Circle Scholarship, talk about all the benefits, what it covers. And um, hey, sorry, David, um, we're not seeing your screen right now. Oh, you're not? Okay, let me no. try this again. Thank you. Try this one more time. All right, can you see it now? There we go, yeah. All yeah. right, great. So now you can see, you can see the code at the top, menti.com. Uh, uh, ben, who's also helping us out with the event, he'll be putting that uh, link into the chat. You can click on it. We just use that code 57053. And that will give you access. You'll actually see our presentation and allow you to interact with some of the slides that we have coming up. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. All of this will be recorded and will be available to view uh, tomorrow uh, on our website. And uh, we'll also be sending out an email to everyone that registered today uh, with basically links and information that comes out of this event too. So that you can very easily follow up uh, learn more about the Full Circle Scholarship and apply. So let's get started. I want to find out if you're excited to apply. So let's try out our interactive feature. Who's who's excited? Are you do you care at all? Are you, you kind of getting there, or is your mind blown right now? Let's see how many responses we can get. We've got, I think, 160 some people. So let's see if we can get up to 100. All right. <clears throat> So we want people to be excited. We also not only want you to apply, but we want you to share this with friends and others that you know of that could really benefit from all the scholarship opportunities that are included in uh, the American Indian College Fund's Full Circle Scholarship. So 
we got people getting there. Hopefully we'll get that excitement way up to mind blowing by the end of our uh, event here today. So one of the first things we wanna talk about is just some of the basics, Oops. some of the basics for uh, the scholarship. One thing, like I said, today is the opening date for the, actually that's wrong. It's 2021, 2022. I, I put the wrong date in there. So that's, it's for the next school year that starts in the fall. Now the application deadline is May 31st. So you can apply any time before then. We of course ask that you get that done early. It helps us and it helps all of our readers and people that review the applications. You can easily do that at collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. We only allow online applications. There are no paper applications anymore, but you can find all the information and the, the application there at collegefund.org forward slash scholarships. So this is our next question. So let's have everybody give some feedback on this. How many scholarships or scholarship opportunities actually make up the full circle scholarship. Because it's not just one opportunity, it's actually lots and lots of opportunities. So I see our numbers going up. Some, some say about 20, some saying 50, some saying 100 plus. It looks like 100 plus is winning. So I'm going to tell you guys right now that the full circle scholarship is made up of more than 100 different scholarship opportunities. Um, so you may see on some other providers that you'll have specific opportunities that you apply for with maybe a different corporate entity or something. But with our scholarship, what we're doing is we're getting your application and matching you with the best opportunity for you. So that could be something with Coca-Cola, could be something with Disney, Ford, it could be Keep Siegel, uh, it could be if you're a California tribal member with our Pachanga scholarship. There's so many different opportunities. Some of those are focused on um, just men or just women. Some are focused on specific states. Some it has to do with what field you're studying. So this kind of is telling you a little bit about what the application is and why it's important. You have to give us a lot of information about what your goals are, what you're studying, what you hope to do with your college career. That's one of the reasons that our application is so important. Now, over this past cycle, the past year, we awarded more than $9 million to almost 4,000 Native students. So there are a lot of opportunities and we want you to have a successful application, which is why we're going over some of the, the, you know, the different nuances of the application and what all is included and how you can be successful. So I got another quiz for you here. Only one of these is 100% right. So test your full circle know-how. Eligibility. So the first one is, do you have to be an enrolled tribal member? Do you have to have a 2.0 GPA or do you have to attend a tribal college? Only one of these is 100% right. A couple of them are partially right, but only one is 100% right. So we got our, looks like you must be a tribal enrolled member is coming in as the top one. You have 2.0 GPA as our second and you must attend tribal college as very loser there. <laughs> So let's take a look at what some of the, the quick eligibility uh, requirements are. So for the full circle, this is actually a picture of our scholarships page, which has the eligibility information. You must be a US citizen. <clears throat> you must be a tribally enrolled member or a descendant. So you don't have to be a tribally enrolled member. If you have a parent or a grandparent, you can submit their proof of tribal enrollment and your birth certificate, and that will qualify you to apply. Uh, you must uh, be, a, or, or you or your, your um, parent or grandparent must be a member of a state or federally recognized tribe. You must have a 2.0 GPA. That was the one that was 100% right, just in case you're wondering. And you must be a full-time student. Now, it does not matter if you attend a tribal college or just a regular traditional college uh, school, any, any student can apply for the full circle uh, uh, scholarship as long as they meet these requirements. So full-time student, 2.0 GPA, 
member or descendant of a federally recognized tribe and a US citizen. There are a very small number of Canadian citizens that can apply through the J Treaty. Uh, and you can learn more about that on our website, but it's for most people, this is what you need to have for your eligibility. So let's take another quiz. So what do you need? What are the physical things that you need to apply? And only one of these is 100% correct. So we got proof of enrollment and or descendancy, selfie picture, or official transcript. I think I kind of gave it away in the earlier part <laughs> of our uh, interaction. So look at these second two, selfie picture or official transcript. Obviously, proof of enrollment and or descendancy is, is the one thing that's 100% correct. But we do want you to get a professional photo. And by this, we don't mean you need to go to a studio and take a picture but we don't want selfies. We don't want you to crop yourself out of a big group photo. We don't want you to take some thing where your hair is bad and stuff, you know, put on a nice shirt or dress, comb your hair, look nice, have someone take a picture of you and be sure to submit that. Of course, like I said, that's the one that's 100% correct. You do need to provide your proof of tribal enrollment or certificate of Indian blood, whatever you have. And if you're a descendant, you'll also need to provide your birth certificate, and then your transcript. Now, uh, this was the trick on that last question. It does not need to be an official transcript because we will verify your transcript with your school. So if you just have one that's off of a website or something of that nature, you're more than welcome to do that. It does need to be from your most recent semester. Uh, you also, if you are a GED student, you can submit that as well too. Uh, and there is a, um, a uh, basically a, an equation that, that translates your GED score to a GPA. So those are the main things that you need to actually fill out the application on our website. So let's take one more look here before we get into the actual application. This is also a great resource too. It's our full circle scholarship application walkthrough video. This is on that scholarship page. You can view this, it's only like four minutes. And this takes you through each of these steps as well too. I would, I would highly encourage you to view this video. And if you have questions, go to that first or to the links on the scholarship page before you contact our staff with any questions because it answers most of the questions that students have. So now I wanna turn this over to our scholarship coordinator, Daniel. He is going to take us through the actual application and talk to you about how to get the best application that you can for the Full Circle Scholarship. Yes, thanks, David. Yeah, so um, my name is Daniel Sauve. I am the scholarships coordinator. Um, I put my email address um, next to my name there, if you see it uh, under my picture here. Um, just so if you have any questions as you're going through the application, you can email me. Um, and, and I'll, and I'll um, help you work through those. Um, so yeah, once you do go to collegefund.org slash scholarships and click on that apply now button, you're gonna see a screen like this. You're gonna create a username and password and make sure you write those down because you will need those in the future. Um, if you ever get a scholarship, um, you'll need to log back into your account to do some things, to upload some documents um, or to apply in future years. So make sure you write those down. Then you'll create your profile um, and just um, put in some basic information. Um, and, um, and then once you've done that and submitted that, um, only then will the application be available to you. So I just wanted to highlight that it is a two step process, the profile and the application. Some folks you know, will fill the, the profile and think they're done. No, you still need to go in and fill out the application. Um, we have, um, um, moved toward just doing one application. So if you if you are, you know, in the past have filled out a full circle and a TCU scholarship application, um, what you'll do now is you'll come to this applications tab and it'll just say complete scholarship application. You'll click on that, fill that out, um, and then um, you'll you'll be you'll be um, applying for the full circle program. And then also if you're at a tribal college, you'll also be considered for um, tribal college uh, TCU uh, scholarships. 
So, um, oh, one other thing I did want to point out about that, um, if you get to that applications tab and it says that you need to, um, that your profile, you need to complete your profile before you can fill out the application, just go back to the profile. If you miss any question or haven't filled out all, every single field, it won't let you go on. So just make sure that you look through that kind of with a fine tooth comb and, um, and then you'll, you'll be able to jump into the application. And so what I really wanted to focus on for the application is our essay questions. These are the things that where you can really affect your score. So um, when you submit your application, it is reviewed by, um, by professionals in higher ed and in native education. It's not, you know, it's not me or David or anyone at the college fund scoring these. It's, it's, it's people that are professionals in, in, um, in higher ed and native ed, like I said. Um, and so those are the people that are going to look at these questions, th these applications. And so you really want your application to stand out amongst the thousands of others. And there are going to be thousands of others applications. So we always get way more applications than we have opportunities to fund students. So um, you do want your, your answers to stand out. So um, what we, what we um, usually will recommend is that you um, really focus on, even before you, you think about, you know, the questions, think about your story and think about what makes, you know, your, your story unique and um, um, what, you know, where you, where you, where you've come from, where you are now and where you see yourself going in future and really kind of um, clarify what your goals are, you know, and what you want to accomplish and what you want to be able to contribute to your community. Um, so that when you go to answer those questions, it'll be really clear kind of, you know, you'll be able to answer those questions. So, um, so like we say, you know, this is your chance to share your, your unique story and tell about your goals. Um, and then when you're answering each of these questions, you really want to come up with questions that are, are, are answers that answer the questions um, clearly, completely and compellingly. So you don't, you know, you're not writing about all this um, other other stuff that's not related to the question. It's not, you know, it's not really, you know, you want to have your kind of thesis, some supporting details, and then a conclusion um, that's all, you know, um, answering each of these questions um, completely. So you have a, a beginning, middle, and end. So that brings us to like actually focusing on the, the mechanics of your writing. That's the other thing that um, our evaluators are going to be scoring is um, your use of language, your, your, are your ideas flowing from one to the next? And then the technical conventions, you know, make sure your spelling is right. Make sure your, your punctuation and your grammar is right. Those are things that you really should, um, get, get perfect. There's no, you know, if you have, have a friend, uh, proofread it for you, or, or if you, if you can't, um, just set it aside for a little bit, come back to it. Um, oh, I see a question here. How, how important is letter count? There's a 300 word limit um, on these so um you know you want you want to answer like i said completely as possible within that limit um so um yeah so you do want to edit it down to to you know to make sure it, you are really telling um the most important points in the most concise way you can um and so um you know with that um there are on our website, you're going to, you'll find some additional um, application tips and um, some frequently answered answers to some frequently asked scholarship um, uh, questions. So I would really recommend you digging into those. Um, those are going to answer a lot of the questions that you're going to come up with. And also on, on the, um, the application tips, there's a, some outlines that can help you kind of figure out um, and start thinking about how you're going to structure your essays and um, uh, so that you can really come up with some some dynamite essays. So um, yeah, I think that's that's about what I wanted to share with you today. Really focusing on those things is going to um, is going to help you to kind of get your best score as you're um, going through this process. So and like I said, you know, email me with any questions you have about the application. Again, my email is uh, dsove at collegefund.org. Um, I'll drop it in the chat here in just a minute if you can't see it on the screen, but it's dsauve at collegefund.org.
You know, Thank you, Daniel. And, and he hit on, you know, those really important things for the application. Obviously, your grades, extracurriculars, all the information that you need for eligibility are important. But talking about yourself, your goals, uh, what you want to do, what's informed your, um, your kind of college journey, those are really the most important. That's, that's what our scores and our readers are looking at. You can find tons of resources on these pages. Uh, one of the things I typed in there is we get a lot of applications that will have short, you know, one sentence or two sentence answers. So don't, don't just leave with that. You know, tell us a story. Tell us about why you're seeking the degree that you're seeking. All those things will, will kind of help you to, to have a successful application. So I also wanted to, to mention that there are more scholarships available for those who are attending travel colleges. And the College Fund provides a lot of additional scholarships to these great institutions. We have 35 that we work at, that we work with throughout Indian country. All of them are accredited institutions that offer vocational, bachelor's and graduate degrees. Uh, the class offerings that they have are really infused with, with traditional knowledge and the way that they operate their curricula and their campuses are very sensitive to to a lot of students who may not you know, be as familiar with living off the res or going to a, a mainstream university. And they have some really great, what I would call familial student support. You feel like you're a family member, the way that you work with your professors, the types of classes that you take, all those things really inform that. And if you haven't considered a travel college, I would, would highly advise you to at least look at the options that are available in our country or maybe near you, depending on where you're at. You can find that information in the student section of our website as well too. It's very easy to find. And there's even more money available if you attend these institutions. So we wanna be sure that you're aware of all the support that's available to you. Let's ask one more check-in question here. Does the College Fund offer more than scholarships to Native students? Some of you may be tired and say, leave me alone, but <laughs> I want to want to ask you, you know, do you think that it's just something that you come to us one time to learn about, or do we offer support to you as a student throughout the year? So if you haven't learned, obviously the answer is yes. And I want to go over just a few of those resources really quick before we finish up. I think we're only going to take 30 minutes here to go over this, and then we will answer your questions. So Oh, looks like our slide got a little messed up. That's okay. So many of our scholarships that we offer include coaching and additional supports and resources. So a lot of those different scholarship opportunities that you saw, those funders, they pay for you to work with a, you know, a coach that's on our team, our student success team. They may pay for you to go to a conference. They may pay for additional tools that will kind of help you to be successful in school and to seek the path that you're seeking. Another thing is internship placement and career planning resources. A lot of those scholarships include that as well too, but we offer a lot of these resources to any student. And we'll talk about a few of those in just a minute. Conferences and event opportunities. I mentioned that just a second ago, but there's a lot of great resources that we offer only to our scholars. So even if your scholarship doesn't specifically include this, we may communicate with you to say, hey, there's this conference coming up. You can apply for this. It would be a really great opportunity. And then of course, we have our ambassador program, which a couple of these students that you see here in this picture are actual scholars, recipients. Uh, they apply to be a part of our ambassador program. And that is a leadership training uh, and development program that's only for just a handful of students, but that is another opportunity that you would have as a College Fund Scholar. So here are just a few of the resources that are available to you. Uh, we have our two guidebooks, which are really fantastic. We have the Native Pathways College Going Guidebook. Uh, that is on that main Native Pathways page. And there's a lot of events that we have. We have basically a semester's worth of events on different topics, everything from, you know, uh, what is graduate school like, how to do a resume, um, you know, what are some different uh, community outreaches that students are doing in their communities. There's lots of different things you can learn 
And they're all at that collegefund.org forward slash native pathways. And Ben will be putting that into the chat as well, the direct link to that. Another resource that we have is the Career Pathways Guidebook. And this is more for students that are in college that are looking to kind of what their career path is gonna be, how they can choose that, what is involved in, in kind of following the career path that they dream of, what things that they wanna accomplish either for their community or anything that they're doing. And that is at collegefund.org forward slash career pathways. This is a completely free resource uh, and you can use this both yourself and, and anyone else that you know of. Our connect platform is a great networking platform that kind of helps you to additionally explore career opportunities. There's a lot of native educators and professionals that you can search through and reach out to to specifically ask them questions about the field that you're interested in or that you're studying. Maybe you want to get an internship in a specific field and you're not quite sure where to start. You can search and find someone that may have a knowledge base there and ask them a question. In addition, there's lots of internships, fellowships, and grants that we post on the Connect platform, and that's updated weekly. And there's also some great career resources. We have videos of Native professionals in lots of different fields, art, politics, science, engineering, all sorts of things. And you can watch those videos and hear a little bit more about what their path was like. And it may give you a little more information about what you're doing. And then the last thing we have is our focus to uh, education and career assessment. And this is actually kind of a little quiz uh, test that you can take that will help you to determine maybe how your interest areas and things that you uh, like or you like to study or things of that nature, how those connect with actual careers and actual education paths. You know, there may be specific schools that you don't even know of that are you know, the top engineering schools or the top art schools or the top schools for people that may be, um, you know, want to be in education. It will tell you about those schools and tell you about paths specifically that you can follow to kind of help you learn more about those resources. Another thing that is great to sign up for, which you can also find on our website, is our scholarship and our Connect newsletters. These go out once a month and you can find both of them at collegefund.org forward slash stay connected. Uh, every single month we're sending out opportunities about different scholarships, different internships, different um, you know fellowships and grants that are coming up that are open. A lot of specifically uh, opportunities for native and minority students. So we want to know, we want you to know a lot about a lot of additional resources to support you in your journey, not just what the college fund offers, but what's out there in, in kind of the wider education world. So be sure to check that out. That will also be in the, um, uh, in the chat at collegefund.org forward slash stay connected. You can find that on our website as well. And then of course, our social media. Um, Native Pathways is, is our main handle for our student resources. A lot of those things that are in the newsletters as well will be on the same social media channels. We'll post those into Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're gonna be launching our TikTok channel too. Um, and there'll be places there that you can learn about additional student resources. Any events that we have coming up, we always post notices about those. And those are great ways for you to kind of find more resources and you know help you get further along in your journey. So we've reached the end of our presentation time. I didn't want to go too long. We're almost at I think exactly 30 minutes from when we started. And this is the place where you can um, go to our survey and enter in to win those prizes, the tablets, the earbuds, the t-shirts that we have. I think we're going to be giving away 10 prizes tonight. And you can uh, go to the Survey Monkey link, which is also going to be in the chat, or you can just copy it down from here. And once you fill that out, you can just say, uh, here's my name and address. I want to be entered into the giveaway, and we'll be drawing those tomorrow and uh, be notifying people if they won. But now we're going to be opening up for questions. So we have another great feature through uh, the Mentee, and I'll, I'll bring up that survey link again, but it'll also be in the chat. This is a place where you can actually type in your questions. So we're gonna pull questions 
from the Zoom chat, but then also from Menti here. So you can actually type in a question and it will appear and, and uh, both Daniel and I will kind of help to answer any questions that you have about Full Circle or any of the other resources that the College Fund provides. So why don't you go into that Menti site, type in some questions and Daniel and I will get started. So were, were there any specific questions that you saw, Daniel, that you, um, you uh, wanted to answer that you saw in yeah, the chat? There, I, I answered some, but there was one question um, that I wanted to, to go back to because it, it, it brought up a good point. Is The question was, um, you know, I'm part-time, will I be eligible for a full circle scholarship? And, and I said, well, you have to be full-time for, for full circle eligibility. Um, but then they said, I'm, a, I, I'm in my, um, my senior year. So if you are within, if you are going to graduate within the within the the year, you are sti still um, eligible for a full circle scholarship um, as a part time student. And the reason for that is just because we know when you're a, you, you're in your final year, you can't always get the classes, or you don't need you know all the twelve credits to graduate. So um, so that's the one exception where you can be a part time student and still be eligible for full circle scholarship if you are. Um, on track to graduate within the year. Great. Why don't, why don't you answer some of these that have come up on the mentee? Some of these are, are pretty simple, but I know that you get a lot of questions in these areas. Yeah. Do you always have to update your profile and picture? Um, so the things on your profile that we do need you to update are any contact information. Obviously, um, email is you, the way we usually will contact you, so make sure you keep that up to date. Um, but any, any other address or anything like that, um, the picture we do like to have those updated, um, you know, um, yearly if you can. Um, I, if not, you know, we do have some folks that use them from year to year. But you know, if it's been a few years, maybe update it. Um, but yes, we do like to keep those things updated. More the, the the more important things that you keep your your other information, your contact information, your program information, all your school. Um, and major, all those things up to date. Um, is this a renewable scholarship? So it's not automatically renewed, but we do try to renew as much as possible if you're still eligible. There's some things where, you know, you're only eligible in your first or second year and then you have to move into a different scholarship program, but, um, or other reasons you would, you would no longer be eligible. But we do try to keep people in the same program. If not the same program, we'll try to find another program that you might be eligible for. Um, but it's not an auto automatic renewal, um, but we do, we do our best to, to renew. And that's, that's also one of those areas where we talked about with the application. It's very important that you tell us as much as possible about what your education goals are and what you want to do, because we're matching you mm -hmm. with an opportunity, maybe with a specific funder. So if you receive the Coca-Cola scholarship, we would love to renew you for that, but it's important that we match you correctly with those funding opportunities. Um, saw some other questions here. Are grad students eligible for the ambassador program? Of course, any, anyone who has received a full circle scholarship can apply for our ambassador program. Uh, we had another question. Other than questions you indicated, is there an essay that will be required? No. Uh, the short answers, those three questions that you saw in our presentation, that is um, basically where we're getting most of the information about you and your goals and what you want to accomplish. So you have to pour everything that you can into those. And like Daniel talked about, it's really important to work on that before you actually go in and complete your application. Spend some time, you know, check your spelling, maybe have somebody read it. Um, you know, we want, to, we want to get as many details about you, your circumstance and what you want to accomplish with your education. The, um, the one other thing I did want to point out on the profile, you'll have the opportunity to enter in your honors, distinctions, your extracurricular activities. That's the other place where I would make sure you put in um, things that you've been involved with, organizations that you, um, you know, have volunteered with or worked with, um, because that's another place where we'll use those, what, what you enter in there to, to match you up with um, a, sc a scholarship that fits you well. <clears throat> Why don't you go through some more of these, Daniel? All right. When should you start applying for scholarships for high school students? 
Um, when, when they're, um, so if they're going to school, you know, this fall, now would be the time to apply. So you're not, you're not able to apply like years in advance, you know, it's the, for now you're applying for students that are going to be entering college 21, 22, you know, 2021, 2022. Um, so that's when you're able to start applying. You, you can, you know, if you want to prepare, you know, things ahead of that, you can start, but, um, but not until February 1st of the year that you'll be entering college um, or, or the student high school student will be entering college. Um, let's see, will there be anything to help with those who want to be in veterinary medicine? Yep, there are scholarships, um, you know, specific or that in, in include veterinary medicine. There are some that are, you know, um, that, that include a lot of different types of um, opportunities that aren't specific to veterinary medicine, but would you'd be eligible for. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's all, all, you know, all majors are eligible, but some are have specific scholarships that um, target certain majors. Um, and some, some are STEM, some are arts, you know, there are different, different um, majors that donors want to fund. Um, where do you apply for the internship programs? Um, David, where do they apply for internship programs? Well, we, through both those newsletters and things, we post a lot of opportunities that are available, especially for, for Native students or in Indian country. We do have specific internship opportunities that are offered through the college fund. There aren't many, but we also have a matching program too. And that is specifically for scholars. So our matching program is if you become a full circle scholar, we will actually help to match you with an internship program if you're having difficulty finding one. Is this for first bachelor's degree only? I'm switching careers and heading into second bachelor's in science for psychology. Um, no, it doesn't, you know, it's not specific to if it's your first bachelor's, second bachelor's, um, associates, a certificate program, master's, doctorates. Um, there are opportunities for all those different degree programs. Again, some, some donors specify degree program, others do not. Um, uh, and and I'll, I'll follow up with that too. We have a lot of non-traditional students yeah. who are coming back after their careers. We have a lot of parents. We have a lot of, we have grandmothers that, that uh, apply for our scholarships and get them. So, you know, we, we are very open to, to funding scholarships for any Native American student at any age who's seeking you know, a degree to kind of help them accomplish their goals. So I see a question, a couple of questions here that are related. How quickly are you notified if you get a scholarship, um, like actually get the money, and then when would the earliest notice of acceptance be received? So for if you're if you apply now, um, we are going to have our readers evaluating applications over the summer, um, and then by August we'll have made those decisions, um, and then from there that's when we'd send. Um, start sending start sending scholarship checks out, um, but sometimes you know that process takes takes a while to get all their scholarship programs uh, filled. So it could it could be you know um, uh, August September um, even in October October um, that this the school would actually receive your the funds. Um, I did see something in the Zoom chat I wanted to bring up too. Someone asked about transferring from a tribal college. To another university and if they would be able to keep their scholarship. Um, one of the great things about our, our full circle program is if you start off at a tribal college and then you transfer to another uh, institution, you actually are still considered a tribal college student in our programs. So you can actually uh, qualify for a lot more um, uh, scholarship opportunities if you start at a tribal college and then transfer to let's say a, a four-year or state school to maybe complete your degree or to, maybe to find a specialized degree someplace else. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? I applied as if I would be full-time as I plan on being full-time, but I finished two degrees this summer with five classes, but not enough credits for full-time. How do I handle this? Um, so yeah, that I, yeah, it's a challenge when, um, you know, things, plans change and you're only able to get a certain amount of credits. Um, 
the that full time uh, criterion is pretty strict. It's really um, not something that we have a lot of leeway with. Um, so, like I said, if it is your you know your senior year, you're going to graduate within a year. Um, that's the only exception you can make to that full time. Full time looks different for depending on degree program. You know, bachelor's generally twelve, um, master's is um, often nine, or sometimes even you know less. You know, a doctorate maybe you know six or around there. Um, so if you know, it, yeah, there's not really much uh, leeway we can do uh, for that um, case. There, there were two questions that that were a little further up that I want to answer that are easy. One is, is financial need necessary? No, we are not a financial need scholarship. Um, if you look at some some places that link to our website, it says that we're financial need. But um, if you talk about financial need in answering those short questions, that's something that our readers consider, but we don't consider that as far as eligibility. Also, uh, someone else asked about is the scholarship eligible for students who are attending, who aren't attending a native college or, or what institutions are eligible? Basically, as long as you are attending a nonprofit accredited school in the United States, you're good. You're good for your eligibility. We don't have any specific requirements outside of that. You can't attend any for-profit schools like University of Phoenix or anything of that nature. But as long as it is a nonprofit accredited school, you can apply for for funding to attend that school. So I see somebody asked if they need to be accepted at the you know the school they applied to before applying for the scholarship. No, um, you can fill out the application, submit it, um, and then update us. If you you know some some folks um, are are have applied to several schools and, and they're waiting to hear back to see where they've been accepted. You can fill out the application, but make sure you email me and let me know where you'll be uh, um, attending. So that if you are selected for a scholarship, that it'll go to the right place, you know, and also that um, that this, the school that you're attending is um, is eligible for a specific um, scholarship program. So so we do need that information before you know going through the awarding process. Um, let's see: Is a low G GPA on the application going to be weighted with other elements based on COVID restrictions from last year to remain eligible as a continuing scholar? Um, oh, and, and to, to, as a continuing scholar. Um, so far, we haven't um, we haven't taken that into consideration. I think for most part, um, most of the folks that we've had that have gotten a scholarship have been able to to maintain their GPA. Um, a lot of a lot of you know some schools have gone to pass fail, which um, you know isn't isn't as clear in terms of how it you know will affect people's GPA. Um, but that might be something that we will look into in future. So far, it hasn't been something that we've needed to um, to consider. Um, yeah. A couple other questions we got about uh, graduate programs or doctoral programs. We do have funding for um, graduate students and for doctoral students, but not nearly as much as we have for those that are seeking associates or bachelor's degrees. So there is funding available for those, um, but that's why it's very important, like we talked about before with your application to be as specific as possible about what your education goals are, are for. Um, and there was also a question about what can we use money for? Um, and that's one of the great things is, especially with our, our travel college students, a lot of them are using some of the scholarship uh, money that they receive to pay for necessities that are above and beyond their actual um, uh, tuition uh, and books and things of that nature. So we don't have limits on that, that the money is sent to your school. So be sure that you check with your financial aid office to see how you will be able to use those funds if you receive them. Uh, there's an interesting question here. Do you have any tips for answering the essay questions if you feel like your story is not unique or compelling, et cetera? Um, that's a great question. I think um, if you really focus on what is important to you and what is um, what you're passionate about, I think that can can stand out, even if it, the, the details of it you know seem like you know the same as uh, you know a hundred other people's stories. 
um, you are a unique person with, you know, that, that has unique contributions to make in this world. And I think if you really focus on what drives you and, and, and what you really want to accomplish, how you want to contribute to your community, I think that, that it's still going to be compelling if, if you really, you know, um, um, can express kind of what, what really is, is driving you. Do you have any other, any other thoughts on that, David? That's a good question. I think that you, when you talk about story, I've had several people, I've seen some questions and stuff about, well, you know, if I don't live on a reservation or if I, you know, if I'm attending school in, you know, a big city or something of that nature, well, is, is it going to affect, um, you know, my application or, or what funds I'll be eligible for? You know, I think just like, like um, Daniel's pointed out, with our readers, they really want to know what you want to do. It's not that you have to have some sort of, you know, <laughs> movie of the week, uh, you know, compelling story about, you know, coming up from nothing or something of that nature. But it's important that you have specific goals or interests that you can talk about uh, in a very informed way. They don't want students that are just like, you know, I just want to go to college, period. Um, you know, they want to know why. They want to know if there's things that have influenced you or they're family members or people in your community that, you know, you know that, you know, inspired you to seek a specific degree path or to attend a specific type of school, or maybe you want to come back to your community and help out. Or if you don't, what are the ways that you want to benefit, you know, Native people or communities, you know, working, let's say, out of a big city or someplace like that away from the reservation? Just being able to talk about what you aspire to, not necessarily what you've done or experienced, that's just as important as talking about any you know, specific circumstances um, that you've faced. So just, just try to do your best to crystallize you know, what you want to accomplish with school uh, and what you hope to be able to do with that as you go forward. Yeah, and that, that kind of ties into this, part, partially into this question about am I, am I less likely to receive funding due to attending college away from the reservation? Um, you know, it, it doesn't have as much to do with um, necessarily, you know, being away from the reservation, but I think if, if you are at a tribal college, there are just going to be more opportunities because we do, you know, you are going to be eligible for the TCU program as well as the, um, the full circle and some full circle scholarships um, donors um, um, require them to go to TCU students. So, uh, um, so, so, there, so that will affect kind of your, um, how many opportunities are available to you. Um, but that has more to do with, you know, whether you're a tribal college or whether you're um, at a, what we call a mainstream non-TCU school. Um, I'm a graduate student. Are only two courses considered full-time for the scholarships? It really depends on the school. Some schools do consider, uh, or some programs do consider two courses full-time. Um, so usually when I'm, when I, I'm usually the one that reviews these things and I'll look at the, you know, the, usually I'll start at the website and, and see what they consider full-time. Usually schools have on their website, we consider this many credits full-time. Um, so I'll go by that. If we have any questions, I'll usually follow up um, with, with you or with your financial aid office um, and, and, and flesh that out. But yeah, it, it depends on the school and the program. Um, but see, yeah, for graduate students, it's usually two or three classes sometimes. So um, it, it varies by school. Yeah, there were there were several questions about when the application deadline is and um, if they're in high school when they should apply. Like Daniel said before, if you're a senior now and you're going to be graduating in May, you can apply now. You know, uh, our application window that is currently open, that is for the entire school year coming up. So that's the entire 2021-2022 school year. So we award for the full circle for the entire school year coming up. It's not broken into semesters. We don't have another application window that opens you know, at the end of the calendar year or something of that nature. This awarding period that we have is for your entire school year coming up. So that is something to keep in mind. This is the time that we want you to apply uh, and, and try to get funding for, for the Full Circle Scholarship. Okay. I also saw several, a couple of questions about volunteering uh, and extracurriculars. Uh, we don't have a volunteer requirement for the full circle. It's great for you to share about, you know, volunteer experiences or, 
you know, things that you do through school, like clubs or student government, uh, things that you do in your community. I think those are really important to share. And you'll, you'll look at the questions that you see there that talks about uh, your involvement in the community and what you do. Those things are, are, are things that readers are looking for. So it's important to talk about not necessarily just volunteering, but things that you may do. Let's say if you work on um, you know, a committee for your local powwow, or um, you've done some, some different work with elders or an elder dinner or something of that nature, talk about those types of things. Talk about the way that you've, you've tried to give back or you know, develop yourself to kind of serve others. Um, I saw a question in here asking if they need, somebody needs to email their transcript um, to me. It really, well, it depends whether you're at a TCU or not. I see, I'm looking, okay, so the person that asked that is at a TCU. You do not have to um, upload any of your transcript or your um, uh, documents um, on our website. If you're at a TCU, I get those inf that information directly from your school. If you're at a, a mainstream school, school you will need to upload um if, when you get a scholarship you'd need to upload um uh, we just need a um your schedule and your um a, a transcript um but yeah so like i said that that just kind of depends for that particular person i was asking you do not need to I'll get that information from your school um and then i saw another question who do i contact for difficulties when setting up my account that's me D so D S A U V E at collegefund.org um, and we can work through those. And usually there's a few few things that trip people up and that I can, I can help you with. Or if I, you need to reset your password, please write down your password. Um, but if you lose it, I can, I can get you set up with that. Um, do these scholarship apply with two year programs? Um, yep, yep. Um, if it's you know, an associate or an, um, you know, any even a certificate program, um, yep, you, do those, you can be eligible in those type of programs. Um, let's see, a couple questions about ambassador program. Um, I don't know, um, at SOC, at what age can you apply as an ambassador? I don't know if there's a, an age requirement for that, David. For, for the ambassador program, like I had mentioned before, that is eligible to anyone who has received a full circle scholarship. So there's no specific age. Um, it's not paid. But there are obviously a lot of perks uh, as you're representing the college fund. Uh, in past years, not including this immediate past year, uh, we basically fly all of the uh, ambassadors into Denver uh, for a week-long training. Uh, and then there's a lot of other events that are held throughout the year, which we may ask you to be a part of, uh, both through helping other students, but then also helping us to uh, raise money with our, our funders. They want to know who students are. They want to learn about you know, what their goals are and what they want to accomplish. So there isn't any actual paid um, um, payment in there. But there's also another thing I, I forgot to mention, which is we have grants that are available. Uh, a lot of our uh, college fund ambassadors receive grants to do projects in their community or at their school. Uh, and that's something that's not available to just kind of any uh, full circle scholar recipient. So. There are a lot of benefits to being a part of that program. Uh, you make a lot of great connections, uh, both here in the College Fund and other institutions with donors and stuff. So there's a lot of benefits to it, but it's not an actual paid position. Um, so I saw a question about the scholarship amounts, dollar amounts, um, and those vary. You know, we have those hundred plus um, scholarships. Um, they range anywhere from um, fifteen hundred dollars a year up to. Twenty thousand dollars a year, or you know, the one the Harvard Law School that we're about to to award here is worth you know even more than that. But um, but most are within that you know um, fifteen hundred to five thousand um, dollar, six thousand dollars somewhere in there range. We do have some that are more, um, but that just depends on um, what what scholarship you're eligible for and and, and are awarded. Online schools or just certain online colleges, um, like David said, it's just a matter of if the school is a private for profit school, we can't fund them. Otherwise, if your if your school offers online um, classes, that's perfectly fine, um, as long as it's a, a, a public or uh, private nonprofit 
um, or tribal college, then um, we can fund those. It, it doesn't matter if it's if it's public or private. The main thing is that it's accredited and it's nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be a for-profit school. Okay. Um, are first and second uh, descendants less likely to receive full circle scholarships than enrolled members of federal? No, um, it, we don't really make a distinction between whether you're you are enrolled or if it's your parent or grandparent that's enrolled. Um, if you meet that criteria, um, that's that's all we we're looking for. Um, yeah. Um, do they decide based on GPA or are there other factors besides the eligibility requirements? Um, so you have to meet so there are certain scholarships that require a higher gpa so 2.0 is the base to, for a lot of the scholarships and then if donors want to, you know to award higher gpas than that they can and they can set that criteria um and then you know in the application process that your gpa does um, affect your overall score um you know not not as much as the essays but it does have an effect it, it does um, factor into the score yeah well, we've reached an hour <laughs> and I, I really wanted to allow people to ask the questions that they have. As I mentioned, we will have a recording of this uh, and our staff will be available to answer any of your questions through social, through email. Uh, we even have a chat bot now on all of our student pages and you can ask questions through that as well. So any additional questions that you have, you're welcome to send us at any time. We'll do our best to kind of answer those for you. But I wanted to bring up that Survey Monkey. Um, survey link again, <clears throat> if uh, Ben could post that one more time, uh, you can go there to fill out the survey. We do want to know about the event, if you've gotten the information that you need and if this was useful to you. But then we also want to give out some of these great prizes. We appreciate all the Native students and professionals who come to our events that want to learn more about the opportunities that we have. Uh, one other thing that I will mention that I did not create a slide for, <clears throat> but you'll be able to see on our social media, in our emails, and on our website is we will be participating again this year in a Native Scholarship Forum. And that will be in just over two weeks. Uh, we'll actually have an event with um, the College Fund, with AIGC, with COBEL, and with American Indian Science and Engineering Society, ACES. Uh, talking about all of our different scholarship opportunities. And that will be on the, I believe it's the 18th, um, a Thursday in the evening, kind of about, about the same time. So that would be another great place, not only to hear about our opportunities, but a lot of other opportunities specifically for Native students. Um, great event. Uh, we, we had a fantastic attendance last year, and we would love for you to learn more about what some of those other opportunities are. But um, Again, uh, thank you so much for coming and for all of your questions. We do want to help you as, as best we can to be successful with your application. Reach out to us anytime, and uh, I hope you have a good evening. Take care.